RC car workshop video. Nearly everything I'm going to be showing you is upgrades to the existing cars and I'm going to talk about what I've got planned for them over the coming few days as I found a nice new speedrun spot close to me, fingers crossed, which I can still use while we are under shelter in place. So let's get straight down to it, see what we've got coming this week. First of all, I'm going to show you what upgraded parts I've got to fit to the Traxxas Rally. Then I'm going to do a minor repair to the WL Toys 144001, which will run in anger later this week. I'm going to talk you through how I can make this pocket rocket, the WL Toys A949, because the 540 motor mounts come in, so that's going in in this video. And the brushless system from this, which is 3S capable, is going to be going in the X Flamingo along with a new metal rear differential. So in this video, the X Flamingo is going to run on 3S. Will it finally be able to do those James Bond style tuck tuck wheelies? Wait and see. Just remember, guys, if you like what you see today, don't forget to subscribe. Well, getting straight down to it with the Traxxas Rally, I've got new front and rear stub axle carriers to replace the existing plastic ones because I was conscious with that 8S power plant that the existing stub carriers were getting a little bit of wear in there. Indeed, two of the bearings in one of the plastic ones had become a bit iffy. So I've got some spare bearings, so I may need to replace the bearings as I go around and fit these. Next up, we have got the STRC motor mount in bracket. This is an aluminum one to replace the existing plastic one. What I've been finding is no matter how tight I tighten this screw, I am getting some movement, a little bit slippage on there. Now I've been lucky, fingers crossed so far, and it's not actually destroyed the gears, which bear in mind this on 8S, there's a huge amount of power, or 5.2 horsepower to be precise, going through here. So I'll replace this with that new aluminum part I've just shown you, and fingers crossed then, that will stay in place. So let's get to it. Well, given they're due, these Traxxas parts are very well engineered. That's the uh, rear ones. I think I confused them around the other way a second ago. And that is the front ones on there. So, so I'm going to check the bearings as I go along, see if you've got any failures. And that is the uh, STRC motor mount on there, which looks very well engineered indeed. Got them in orange to match the wheelie bar at the back. Sadly, the orange ones of these were about four weeks delivery time. Okay, got my first two carriers on, on this side. The fronts are labelled left and right. It's labelled left and right as though you're looking from the back of the car. So from the back of the car, this side's left and that side's right. I just thought you'd mention that because if you're fitting these yourself, you might get confused. Okay, well, I've got the new stub axles in both front and rear. All the bearings are actually in uh, good order on there. Got my new STRC uh, motor mount on there, which should make the world of difference to uh, keeping this beast in check. Whilst I've got the uh, ESC moved over to the side, I'm also going to take the opportunity to take the radio receiver. And today we're going to be running with the Radiolink RC6GS and a new, I think it's 6 or 7 channel receiver on there. This should be good for 600 meters range. The other day, I was out with John from Fox City RC and the car was not wanting to go beyond about 50 meters before it had a radio issue. So I don't really have the time to fill around deciding is it the radio, is it the receiver. I'm just going to swap the receiver out for a new radio link one on it. And in doing that, it's a double edged sword because you then need to recalibrate the mamba to run with the new receiver. So I'm going to do that off camera, put the car back together, then we're going to take it outside, have a quick spin around the yard. Well, having removed the old receiver, the problem is obvious fairly immediately. There's no antenna wire attached to it anymore. And to quickly point out, as I put the motor mount back together on here, the advantage this metal motor mount has is, instead of this metal screw going into a like a, a nut in outside a plastic captive unit on the Traxxas one, which can then move it around inside, causing the motor mount to move, this screw is going into a threaded piece of metal, giving it a lot more strength, and fingers crossed, that shouldn't then move anywhere. Okay, receiver in, calibrate the ESC with a receiver, which you need to do with these castle ones every time you fit a new receiver in there. So, time to stack it outside, quick spin around the yard, and test out my mods. Now the rally, handling on the thing, on the DB and stars on here. Oh, it's gonna flip a bit. They've almost got too much grip. Well, sadly that doesn't look good and I managed to break the suspension on the rear of the car, so more of this to come next week. Well, next up we have the WL Toys 144001. This has got a Valenian 3,500 kV motor in, Mamba X ESC. Everything was going well, a little bit stuttering from the car. And when I took it apart, this was the reason why. The cat pack that I'd soldered into here, 
the lead on the Dean's connector has come loose, so I wonder if that has been responsible from some of the long-term stuttering. Anyway, don't think it needs that cat pack. I have the cat pack one and it fits to a different car. So I'm going to remove the cat pack and fit the Dean's connector straight to the member X, which will give me a little bit more room inside the car, which is a bit tight. Well, since I shot the first part of this video on the 144001, I've been a busy boy. I've made up this new metal mounting plate, which I'll put a link to below if anyone is interested in this, because that then enables you to be able to fit something like this Venom 2000 200 milliamp 3s lipo underneath there now in order to get that to work and sit the esc on the top here uh, at the recommendation of the rc master i'm ditching the stock body and i'm fitting one of these fat bodies i'll put a link through to those below the video which as you can see is pretty much the same profile but with that bigger gap there at the top i should be able to fit the esc on the top of the car under there and run the thing flat out on 3s fingers crossed i will put a link to that plate below the video if anyone is interested in it so a little bit of work still to do on this as i'm actually waiting on you at lower profile esc to go on the car so we'll see that one run in anger during the week well i was hoping to have the wl toys a 949 up and running in this video most of my new parts have come my 540 motor mount has come my steel spur and pinion gear check out that pinion gear compared to the stock one my two new steel diffs have arrived because I figured that with the amount of power I was going to put through it, I should buy the rated ones. However, I'm still awaiting delivery on the new suspension parts, and that is because I had a little breakage on the plastic suspension arm at the rear here, so I've put all new metal parts on order for both front and rear for the suspension. But in the meantime, I've also purchased this, which was a bargain, 11 bucks from Banggood. It's a 4mm thick aluminum chassis plate for this car. So, over the weekend, I will be fitting the chassis to the car and all the other goodies just awaiting my new metal suspension parts to arrive. And then it's game on with a 540 motor. We're going to go brush to start with, then possibly brushless. What do we think, people? So, without more ado, getting straight on to the X Flamingo Rider. I've got my metal differential kit, which is right from Banggood, so I'm going to fit that to the car. I've also got this brushless ESC set up. Well, it's running on a brushless ESC and motor at the minute. That is only 2S capable. This one is 3S capable. Also, I am going to see if I can squeeze this 3S motor into that thing. Well, I've got my new 35 amp ESC and 4800 kV brushless motor. That bigger one was simply too big to squeeze in there. I've also tidied the wiring up. If anybody else is thinking of doing the same conversion on one of these, you need those wires nice and tidy at the back because the body goes on and then slides backwards. So you want all the wires so they can neatly fit through there. Hope that makes sense. It's far easier now. I've tidied the wires up to get the body on and off. Okay, well I've installed the steel differential. I'm not going to bore you with the details over it, but that's taken about an hour and a half to take apart and put back together very, very carefully. Not overly complicated, just a lot of very small parts in here, not suited to these big man boy fingers on here. So, anyway, time to get a 3S pack in it and test it in the driveway. Will it wheelie or not though? That's the question. Well, this is definitely a Richie Walt moment. Had the X-Rider Flamingo working okay the other day, test ran it outside, Put it on a full throttle on the bench just now, it seemed absolutely fine. I went outside to practice my wheelie launch and there's a grating noise coming from the back of the car. So I've immediately stopped the motor and I'm going to take it all apart again and see what it is. Everything still seems to be turning and working fine but something is not quite right. So in the interest of not busting anything, I'm going to call it a day. And speaking of which, that concludes the end of my workshop video for this week. All of this stuff will be running again in anger and I personally cannot wait to get that A949 working with a brushed setup on there as so I have a feeling I'm going to be able to put down a huge amount of power through that one and get some serious speed. So if you don't want to miss that video, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Well, thumbs up if you like this video, guys. Post any comments you might have in the comment section below the video and hit the circle below to subscribe. And if you do hit the circle, don't forget to hit the bell.